So these, I like it. these two buildings are pretty much the only buildings left from the original airport. And this is where the management company headquarters here. And then this is the hangar. That's where the uh, farmer's market used to be. And they've moved over to one of the parks over there. So these are really the only, only structures besides the tower that's left in Miller. And they've saved the tower and it's now a historical uh, monument. This is the kind of thing that they thought about uh, when they built this was to come in and do the parks and make it a really nice walking amenity. So this is, all of these lakes are water retention ponds. So when it rains, they go up and down. Everything in Miller is irrigated with recycled water. When, you, when we get over on the far side of the uh, community, you'll see a great big water tower. And that's all recycled water that's pumped up into that tower and it is used for the irrigation. So we have purple pipes throughout the community with all irrigation water. So anytime you see a purple pipe, it's recycled, don't drink it. Okay, I want you to turn around and look at the intersection. There are two intersections that go into that neighborhood over there. The decision was made early on not to let people cross the highway and come straight in. So you can see the Longhorn, we call it the Longhorn down here. It doesn't let people come out of the neighborhood and come straight across. They have to turn, they can't go, come in. But you'll notice that the bikes and the pedestrians can come straight across. Also in this intersection, if you look very carefully down there, there is a bike traffic light. Uh, you see the big light with the red arrow now, up to the right is a bike traffic light. And we have the video sensors here. So when I pull down in my bike down to that post, it will see me and turn, give me a light, give me a green light. And when it does, there's a big sign up there that says no right turn on red. So when the bike light goes, the right turn on red stops so people can't turn across me. So that's the way we've got the bike lane on the right side of the right turn only lane. You know, we say, don't do that. Well, the way we overcome that is to put the sign up and say, no right turn on red when you get the green bike light. Okay, so those are a couple of things about this intersection that's pretty good. This is a part of the highway or the road that originally was parking, bikeway, traffic lane, traffic lane, bikeway, parking. How wide is that? What does that look like? Looks like a stinking raceway. We had people doing 55 up through here. There were no stop signs and it was just wide open. So when they, when they decided to resurface this, they came to the community and says, okay, we're gonna put bikeway on the side like this we're going to change it but we're going to take out all the parking up here well like he said the community went nuts you can't take my parking out right yeah what have you got a garage for every house in miller has a two-car garage what do you got a garage for my kid lives here with his wife and three children guess what their garage looks like it's a storeroom right their, par their cars, they have three of them, are parked out on the street. So it's tough to get rid of parking space in Miller. So they said, we'll take it out here, but when we get further up, you'll see that the, the buffer narrows down and the community wrote a document. Yeah, we did. We got together. We have a number of urban planners in the community and we sat down and got that software online that lets you plan out streets and say, okay, this is cars, this is bikes and all that kind of stuff. And we said, this is what we want. We want parking, we want a bikeway, it's tight, but we can do it. And then we want narrow those lanes down a little bit, right at 10 feet, maybe a little narrow, and then parking. And they said, wow. And so they looked at it 
and they modified it. They took some of the parking away at the intersection for sight lines, but they only took out 11 parking spaces in this whole section you'll see up here. And so the community basically said, okay, we can deal with that. So it was a lot of fun to, to be able to sit and do that with the community. So we're gonna go up here. Uh, we'll go through two stop signs on a two-way bikeway. I want you to look at what's happened to the uh, pedestrians. See how narrow it's become down there for the pedestrians? By putting that island out there, the pedestrians got much less space to walk across. The same thing all through the community. You'll see we have bulb outs at all the intersections to try and narrow it down so the pedestrians don't have to go so far. But even even better, up at Berkman, we really narrowed it down so p pedestrians have a short distance across those intersections. So this is a stretch that John memorialized on a video when we did the ribbon cutting for this new street here. So this is one of the spines of the community. This is Maddie Street. We have a pool and a park down there. And then the park and the pavilion where they have the farmer's market now is at the other end of this street. So this is one of the, the spines of the community. That, uh, that park is brand new. I mean, the pavilion just opened six months ago. So we'll go by there on the way, way back out. So uh, these are some of the original housing. So he was talking about the lottery. This is, this is the lottery. Look at the trees, they've grown up pretty well. Once we cross Berkman, that's all new. And then trees aren't very much yet. But these are, a lot of these are oak trees. Think what that's gonna look like in 20 years. So this is the primary through route. If you're getting through the airport going from north to south, you come up Berkman and it goes on all the way up to the big highway up there. So you got, this is your main route through. And the question is how do we slow cars down on this? This is designed with the dream that someday we would put light rail down the middle. So all the infrastructure for that is already built in. Okay. Now look what they've done for the pedestrians over here. And here, look how short that is for the pedestrians walking across each time. And you don't have to look both ways. You walk halfway and look. So both the bikes and the pedestrians are handled in this protected intersection. That's the old street. This is the new street. This was put in like eight, nine years later after people had gone to Europe and Amsterdam and come back and says, why can't we do that here? And the answer was, we can. Let's just design it and build it. So this got built after that trip. And that's when we said, OK, what about that one? And that's how we went back and retrofitted that. It's not perfect. Right down there is uh, one of the big affordable buildings, the, the plus 55 affordable. It's where I met my wife. Uh, we passed along here. Roughly 25% of the housing you just passed was affordable. Could you pick it out? No. My son's house is back in there. He lives, lives right there. And it, it's just another one of the houses, another one of the row houses. Hey everyone, I just wanted to jump in here real quick to say thank you so very much for watching this video. It really means so much to me. My mission for this channel is to profile some of the amazing transformations that are happening around the globe and in the process, hopefully inspire more people to take up the charge to help create communities that promote and support a culture of activity. So perhaps the two most impactful things that you can do with this video are to give it a thumbs up and share it with others. In just a couple minutes, you're going to see what we think is Texas's first protected intersection, which has actually been in place now for many years. Okay, let's get back to this Miller community tour with Preston Tyree.
some more of the three-story buildings you were talking about, different designs, but you notice they do, they have fun with colors. And you talk to somebody and say, which is yours, the green one? Oh, okay, got you. There's one, there's about six of these complexes like this in the community. So you see there's four single garages here, four single garages there, same thing, four, 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 okay? So, uh, yeah, that's one way to get density. This is the highest density in the community, and I forget what the number is per acre, but if you go look at the Miller book online, it tells you it's, I forget what it is per acre, but it's pretty high. section of residential homes, single family homes in the neighborhood. And they just started putting in the, the surveying marks down in this corner. Uh, it doesn't take them long to do these things. It's crazy. Three and a half, four months and they're, you know, they're up and moving. Pretty much all of these houses are already sold before they start building them. What you're in is, we think, the first protected intersection in Texas. So we got a two-way bikeway here, we got a two-way bikeway there. And we got these great big barriers out here to protect the bikes and the pedestrians. And it may be the first one in Texas. Uh, so this one's been in uh, probably eight, eight or nine years. And, uh, you know, again, a lot of people say, don't put a two-way bikeway in beside a, a, a two-way road because what happens when you have to go the other way or what happens when, you know, whatever. Well, if you do it right, you can make it work. You know, it's like down at the other end. You got a right turn, a bikeway on the side, on the right side of a right turn lane. Put up a big sign that says no turn on red when the bikes are there. It's pretty simple. So you can make it work. Uh, the road down there is Manor Road. It's got bikeways on both sides protected with candlesticks, buffer and candlesticks. So that road leads into the network in Austin, comes all the way around, meets this one down here, and it meets 51st Street, which is also a protected bikeway all the way across. So all of the main roads outside of Miller have protected bikeways on them, as well as what we've done inside of Miller. Now, see the big tower, water tower? That's all reclaimed water. That's what feeds our irrigation in the whole community. This is the school, the new middle school. It will have 800 to 1,100 students. Depends on how we over overburden it, uh, but it's supposed to be done uh, in time for school in 2023. So September 2023 is the the supposed completion date. This street, this was put in to be for the school, basically. Uh, so you know it provides. The buses will come in up there and down there. So theoretically, the buses will not be out here. This was for, for kids coming to school. Uh, and then the big main roads out there on the other ends of these streets, both have two-way bikeways on them, protected two-way bikeways. So it, they really did a good job of thinking it through that you're gonna have a middle school. Guess what? Kids are gonna ride to school at a middle school. Kid and could go climb in that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Wouldn't that be fun? See that little building right there? Okay. That's an ADU, Auxiliary Dwelling Unit. Oh, wow. So throughout Miller, you'll find some of the houses have apartments above the, the uh, garage. And uh, they did that on purpose so that when you need one, it's there. And uh, you know, we've got the people across the street from us, their grandparents, their parents come to visit the kids and they've got an ADU. And so it, they've got a place that they don't have to live in with the kids and everything else, they've got their own place. But there's, um, I wanna say 30 of those throughout the community. Okay, here's our HEB. This is not a big store, it's only 90,000 square feet. They wanted 130,000, which is typically what they build. But in Miller, we said, nah, we really don't want all that for one thing. And so uh, the parking is limited people have trouble finding parking. So we say, walk and bike. That works really well. We've got more bike racks in front of the HEB than anywhere else in Miller, and we fill them up, okay? So if you, you can't see it from here, but they supply all of their own power through solar. They are, they are lead gold. Yeah, and uh, they, they built the whole thing for sustainability and uh, it really, it works. Uh, they do a good job. And it is one of the most diverse shopping communities ever seen. If you walk into HEB, you'll see somebody from anywhere in the world shopping in there. And they've got good selection because of that. Uh, great produce, all the bit, yeah. So it, they did a really good job on this one. So the customers of this HEB, are they primarily from? No. Or are they no, coming in from they're coming from all over. One, no, no, we got neighborhoods. neighborhoods. We got neighborhoods all around. Yeah, and they're coming in from all over. So they're okay. using the internal arterial streets. If they come in from that side, if they that's come in from out there, no, they're coming right in because that's 51st Street right out there, just over that ridge, just down out of sight is 51st Street, and that's a main east-west route. Okay. But if they're over there, they, they use the internal streets. Yeah, they, come through, they come through Berkman, which is right down there. Uh, come up Berkman, come in. And we have some other stuff, some, some of the medical facilities. We have an emergency room in there, a 24-hour emergency room. We've got uh, a dialysis firm that's in there. Uh, we've got AT&T has an office in there. So there's a stuff. Oh, yeah, and Twin Liquors. Oh, Got to go. have a liquor store, you know, so. This stretch here, this is our main path. When the community is finished and they complete the path, it'll be 6.7 miles, and it's really on the, the perimeter of the residential part of the community. We've got two places in Miller where we have shop houses. So a commercial facility here, two stories of living above. We've got them all across. Lots of different things, a yoga studio, uh, you know, a, a salon over there, those kind of things. Uh, I think pretty much 100% the people who work here live here. Wow. Yeah, and that was part of the deal was if you, if you own this, you gotta live up there. You gotta, so. Uh, I think there's been some, houses? yeah, we call them shop houses, live work, live work. Okay. same thing. Uh, we just, we named them shop houses. And so this is a, another one of our parks. And this one is a, uh, uh, 
is a petanque, the French version of bocce. So this is a petanque court, uh, and it gets pretty active at times. It's pretty interesting. Uh, and this is this is where the July 4th parade starts. Is right here, and goes that way. Anyway, uh, we have a July 4th parade every year in Miller, and yeah, we do that. <laughs> create the Wooner. We've already got the plans all laid out. Block there, block right over there where the garage entrance is, and block down at that block. So this whole thing is pedestrian priority, okay? okay? So trucks can get in here and do deliveries. Emergency vehicles can get in here, but it's not a through street. Yeah. And it's pedestrian, because that's gonna be office buildings. That's gonna be eight stories of apartments. So we're going to have a lot of people on foot in this area. But anyway, that, that's one of my dreams is to create this as a pedestrian space. So thank you for coming to Austin and seeing Miller. Obviously, I love it and uh, enjoy showing it off. Thank you. Thank you all so much for watching this Activity Asset Profile video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give it a like, leave a comment, share it with a friend. And of course, I'd be honored to have you subscribe to the channel and be sure to ring the bell for notifications. Well, that's all for now. So until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. Again, just a absolutely wonderful, comfortable environment here. Riding through the Miller uh, neighborhood on the Zach Scott two-way bikeway cycle track. Absolutely delightful.